episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, The Man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, we are taking a look at Into the Maelstrom, the sixth and final Mythos pack in the Innsmouth Conspiracy Cycle. There are spoilers throughout if you care about that sort of thing. If you enjoy what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Before we get started, I'd like to thank the patrons of this channel for their tremendous support. Special thanks to Robert Piggott, the latest uh, patron to Embrace the Darkness. Thank you very much, Robert, for your support. I greatly appreciate it. I hope your uh, 2021 is filled with some fantastic Arkham Horror LCG adventures. If you'd like to be like Robert and support the channel's goals and see your name on this list, head over to Patreon.com, sign up for a tier of your choice, and claim your rewards. That would be awesome. Without further ado, let's get started. FFG released its preview article for Into the Maelstrom, the final Mythos pack in the Innsmouth Conspiracy Cycle. I believe it was on Friday, and uh, we are headed into the sunken halls of Iha Inthlai, the uh, great deep one city beneath the ocean, uh, hidden uh, just below Devil Reef. Uh, we don't have a lot of information about uh, the scenario itself. Uh, we uh, f we know from the preview article that we will be uh, encountering a location called the Gateway of Iha Inthlai, which is a swirling vortex of otherworldly currents. However, before the investigators are able to pass through uh, that gateway, they will uh, have to search the surrounding tunnels for the keys that will open their way forward. Searching for keys has been one of the uh, primary themes of this campaign, and so it's uh, no surprise that it makes its uh, reappearance here for the uh, final chapter of this campaign. Now, once the uh, investigators enter Iha in Thlai, they will begin to explore the underwater corridors of this city, which will include a location known as the Lair of Dagon. Uh, considering that this, uh, this scenario takes place mostly underwater, I would assume that uh, most, if not all, of the locations will be either partially flooded or fully flooded, which will, again, is, has been another main theme of this uh, campaign, and uh, many of the creatures uh, and uh, um, treacheries that uh, investigators encounter get more difficult if you are at partially flooded or uh, fully flooded locations. So that will uh, pose another challenge for investigators. The scenario features two slumbering ancient ones, Father Dagon and Mother Hydra. These two uh, always seem to come in pairs in uh, every Arkham Horror Files product that FFG releases. Needless to say, if uh, both awake, the investigators and uh, humanity are doomed. As you may remember, the investigators will uh, meet uh, Father Dagon in the uh, previous uh, Mythos pack to this, where he is also slumbering. Uh, the uh, this scenario, the preview article anyway, hints that uh, both both ancient ones will be slumbering, and then uh, of course, if they wake up, I imagine since this is the final mythos pack of the uh, campaign, that uh, you will probably have to fight one or both of them, and uh, the uh, odds of the investigators uh, coming out on top in that uh, kind of situation seems uh, very remote indeed. I've never been a huge fan of uh, either Father Dagon either or Mother Hydra in the uh, in the uh, uh, Arkham Files products. I always sort of consider them to be sort of lower tier ancient ones. I mean, uh, when I think of deep ones, I always think of Cthulhu as being on top, and then uh, uh, Father Dagon and Mother Hydra just being uh, really big or uh, powerful deep ones. But uh, here they are, Ancient Ones, and I am sure that they will have the power to match. Uh, we've uh, seemed to meet an Ancient One in every uh, uh, final chapter of these uh, these types of campaigns, and uh, it is uh, usually very bad news if they show up, and I don't expect that to be uh, any different here in Into the Maelstrom. I thought I'd take a look at, just for a moment at uh, Iha Inthlai itself. Again, uh, much like this Mythos pack, we don't have a lot of information about the, the Great Deep One City. Uh, we do know from H.P. Lovecraft's writings that it is one of the undersea cities uh, of the Deep Ones. In fact, it's the only one that he mentions in his writing, although he does hint that there are numerous others scattered about the ocean floor uh, around the globe. Uh, it is... Uh, considered to be a, uh, or I guess it is described to be, a cyclopean hub of unearthly and terrible beauty 
with many columns and palaces and uh, hundreds of terraces uh, made of coral. Uh, in the Shadow Over Innsmouth uh, uh, short story, uh, the U.S. government attacks uh, Iha Inthlai uh, in the 1920s using uh, various uh, submarines to try and destroy it, but uh, as the narrator states the, states, the Deep Ones can never be destroyed and uh, the city is merely damaged and is uh, probably thriving uh, to this day. So I'm uh, looking forward to uh, venturing below uh, the water and seeing Iha Inthlai for myself and seeing uh, what sort of take on it uh, designer Matt Newman has in store for us. The uh, preview article, uh, usually we get some, uh, the preview articles spoil some locations to give us a better idea as to what to expect uh, once we venture beneath the waves. Not in this case, we simply get uh, spoilers for a couple of, uh, a couple of enemies and uh, one treachery, and we'll take a look at those now. The first enemy is the Aquatic Abomination. Uh, I believe this art was initially used uh, back in the Call of Cthulhu uh, LCG and uh, I don't know what that thing is it looks like it's part part orca part p penguin part shark uh, it is a uh, it has five fight seven health and two evade monster abomination traits it is a hunter of course while aquatic abomination is moving fully flooded locations are considered to be connected to one another and Aquatic Abomination cannot attack during the same phase it moved via the Hunter keyword. If it catches up with you, it will deal 2 damage and 2 horror. So 5 fight and 7 health. This guy is a beefy boy who will be a, a difficult and time-consuming enemy to defeat. Uh, 5 fight is going to challenge many a Guardian. And 7 health, man, that's going to take... Uh, take some time to chew through even for a guard a well-equipped uh, guardian or other investigator who's in charge of dealing with enemies it's going to take some time to chew through that uh, seven uh, health pool uh, of course he doesn't have the retaliate keyword or anything like that so uh, the uh, your biggest problem will be trying to hit him with that uh, five combat of his but uh, uh, this is the final chapter of the campaign, and uh, if you've earned enough experience points, you should be well armed. Still, uh, fighting this guy is probably not uh, the best way to deal with him. He does deal 2 damage and 2 horror, which is uh, no joke. That's uh, That will be pretty devastating if he gets his, uh, his claw and jaws on you. But he only has 2 evade, and uh, coupled that coupled with the fact that he uh, cannot attack during the same phase it moves via the hunter keyword. That means uh, if you're able to evade this guy and put a little bit of distance between you uh, and he catches up to you, he's still not going to attack you, and then you could simply evade him again the following action and, uh, and uh, again try to move away. Uh, that bit of text about the uh, fully flooded locations uh, are considered to be connected to each other. I, I fully expect that most of the locations in this scenario are going to be connected to one another. So it's not going to be very difficult for this guy to catch up with you. Uh, but if you don't want to to waste the time killing him, then he does only have two evade and, uh, and uh, you should uh, be able to get away from him. Like most investigators can, can, uh, can probably get away with uh, from him fairly easy. The problem, of course, will be, are you going to have to deal with curse tokens on top of that? Uh, we don't know what the final chaos bag will look like in this uh, particular chapter. So uh, so there is uh, those things working against you, but his his base of aid is, is pretty easily is pretty easy. Uh, this sort of leads me to believe that, uh, you know, while a well-equipped uh, guardian or other uh, investigator who is in charge of uh, killing the enemies, uh, shouldn't have uh, too much trouble taking down this abomination. Uh, it may not be worth the effort. Seven health, I mean, even if you're dealing two damage a shot, that's four attacks. Uh, so that's not particularly ideal. You really need to, even if you're hitting for three, you need to make three attacks against this guy. So uh, I think this is uh, this, uh, this type of enemy is really one where your dodge tank... Uh, will have a chance to shine if you have an investigator with a high agility skill value. Uh, they grab this guy and simply uh, lock him down. 
uh, while the the rest of the group uh, does the trick. And there are lots of investigators who are capable of doing this. I know when we played uh, the Forgotten Age, um, uh, Iron Man, uh, the uh, one of the members of my group was using uh, uh, Rita to lock down pretty much every enemy at the table given uh, given the chance. So if you've got somebody like Rita or you've got uh, Wendy or somebody like that, uh, I think uh, this guy, while he is pretty menacing for the damage and horror that he deals, uh, I think if you have a dodge tank who can simply uh, grab this one and just keep it uh, out of the people's ways, the, uh, the monster hunters in the group can uh, spend their time killing deep ones, and I expect to be... Uh, I expect there to be a plenty of those uh, in uh, Iha and Thlai. Speaking of deep ones, there is uh, one spoiled in the preview article. This is Dagon's Brood. It is. Uh, it has one fight, four health, and three evade. Humanoid monster deep one. Spawn at the lair of Dagon or the gateway to Iha and Thlai, whichever this is farther from you. So uh, we don't know how the locations are laid out, of course, but we do know... Uh, the gateway to Iha and Thlai is going to be near the beginning, and probably the Lair of Dagon would be near the end. So uh, uh, if you draw this guy early, he's probably going to be coming at you from the Lair side. If you draw him late, then uh, he'll be uh, at the gateway making his way to you. Of course, uh, like all the Deep Ones, it has Hunter, and it has the forced effect after Dagon's Brood engages you. If Dagon is in play, either place one Doom on Dagon or Dagon attacks you. And uh, the Dagon's Brood uh, uh, will hit you for one damage. The uh, I think this is one of those... Uh, this, this card made me laugh because the art makes this guy look really, really menacing. Like he's got that... He's got a hold of somebody. He's gigantic. He's uh, almost like there's fire all over the place. But... This guy only has one one fight, so he's not, uh, when it comes to fighting, he's not quite as menacing as he looks. Although he does have four health, which makes him pretty beefy, uh, which is going to probably chew up at least two actions. Uh, even against a well-prepared investigator, uh, you're going to be needing to, if you're hitting for a couple damage per shot, this guy's going to soak up two of them. He's easy to hit, but uh, yeah, you're... Uh, he, he can soak up a, a considerable amount of damage. Even if you're hitting for three, you're going to have to spend a couple actions to deal with this guy. Three, uh, three of eight is pretty uh, average, but uh, this is a guy that you definitely want to kill. You do not want to evade this guy uh, because of that hunter keyword. Coupled with his forced effect uh, is going to uh, make you want to kill this guy. If uh, Once this guy engages you, you're either adding a doom on Dagon which is bad enough, or if uh, I assume uh, once Dagon gets enough doom during the game, uh, during this scenario, Dagon will then begin attacking you, and uh, if past Ancient Ones are any indication, uh, you do not want to be attacked by Dagon uh, from anywhere or any way, and uh, uh, so this guy is, uh, I think, will be enemy number one. Uh, if he hits the table and he is coming at you, you are going to want to get a hold of this guy and uh, deal with him somehow. Uh, perhaps if he is uh, approaching, because he's probably not going to be spawning on you, you're going to need to find, uh, maybe there are, uh, use some cards that you can uh, take out enemies from a distance. There aren't that many of those, unfortunately. You could do something with it uh, like uh, Luke Robinson. If you uh, say Luke hides in his uh, gate, uses his gate box to hide away in the dreamlands and then uh, nuke this guy with a storm of spirits or something like that, you can do some damage. But it's going to be hard to deal with this guy coming at you because he will probably engage you at some point and uh, and uh, start uh, adding Doom to Dagon or have Dagon attack you. So this guy is, while he is uh, he's incredibly weak and he only hits for one damage, that is not where his power lies. Uh, if he uh, starts engaging you, Dagon is going to start attacking, and uh, that's bad news. So uh, finding a way to deal with this particular enemy is going to be... Uh, going to be uh, something to think about as you uh, as you uh, jump into this uh, particular scenario.
The peer review article also spoiled one treachery card. It is Thalassophobia. Uh, it has the terror trait, revelation if no investigators are at, flooded locations, the lassophobia gains surge. Otherwise, each investigator at a partially flooded location takes one horror, and each investigator at fully flooded locations takes one direct horror that cannot be prevented. Uh, I don't expect there to be uh, many uh, non-flooded locations in uh, Iha Inthlai, so I expect... Uh, the surge trait on this one isn't going to uh, trigger all that often. Now, uh, unlike something like Rotting Remains, which, which uh, hits you uh, potentially for three horror, this spreads the love around to all investigators on the table. So uh, if you're at a partially flooded location, you're going to take one horror, and uh, each investigator at fully flooded locations will take one direct horror that cannot be prevented. So one horror isn't that bad. Uh, it really depends on uh, the impact of a card like this really depends on how much pressure the scenario is putting on your sanity pool. If uh, there are a lot of these types of effects sort of uh, pinging away at you, uh, causing you to take little bites of horror, uh, little chunks of your sanity drifting away uh, with each uh, mythos phase, then this uh, starts to become quite dangerous, especially if you're at a fully flooded location and you can't soak that uh, horror with uh, some allies. Uh, you can't prevent it. You can't uh, do anything about it. That would be uh, that uh, makes this uh, potentially qu uh, fatal if you draw it at the wrong time. Uh, again, we don't know how many of these, uh, how many copies of the Lassophobia will be in the encounter deck. I suspect uh, there are probably three, uh, so it will be. Uh, there is a chance you could get pinged uh, quite a bit during the scenario for one horror a pop. And uh, you'll just have to be very careful and make sure you bring some sort of, uh, if you're playing in multiplayer, uh, if you've got somebody, uh, bring some bring an investigator along who can heal horror, uh, or if you're playing solo like I do most of the time, then uh, you'll probably just want to make sure that you uh, either have, you're watching uh, the locations that you're staying at during the, ahead of the mythos phase, uh, sticking to partially flooded locations, if at all possible, because a lot of the, the enemies and treacheries that focus on flooded locations don't uh, have a lesser effect at those locations or uh, bring some sort of uh, healing along because uh, that uh, once you start taking that direct horror, there's really uh, allies aren't going to help you. You can't prevent it. So your only way is going to be your only way to deal with it if it starts to mount is going to be to heal it, which is uh, not something every class is uh, particularly good at. That's going to do it for my look at the scenario in Into the Maelstrom, the uh, sixth and final Mythos pack in the Innsmouth Conspiracy Cycle. Again, we don't uh, know very much about this uh, scenario besides the fact that uh, we are going underwater. I expect most of the locations will be either partially flooded or fully flooded, which means uh, the uh, enemies and treachery cards are going to be uh, slightly more powerful than they probably would be otherwise. Uh, we know that there are two deep ones, or two deep ones, there's going to be a ton of deep ones. There are going to be two ancient ones in this uh, scenario, Father Dagon and Mother Hydra. They will begin asleep. Uh, it seems likely that uh, we will uh, be adding doom to them, and once we add enough doom to them, they will awaken and uh, wreak havoc on us. Uh, we've seen a couple of the enemies, the Aquatic Abomination, uh, very beefy, uh, difficult to kill but uh, very easy to evade, so uh, a, a prime target for a dodge tank type of character who can lock it down. Uh, it's nice that uh, it, while it does have the hunter keyword, it can't attack if it uses hunter, so that gives you a chance to, uh, to lock it down before it attacks you. Dagon's Brood, uh, very dangerous enemy. It uh, will not spawn on you, so uh, it will uh, begin to hunt. And once it engages you, uh, you will either be adding Doom to Dagon or Dagon will be attacking you. Uh, God forbid Dagon attacks because uh, uh, I don't know what he will do. But uh, given uh, what we've seen from other Ancient Ones, it will not be good. And I expect that if uh, once Dagon awakens and if you get hit by the, uh, the forced effect on Dagon's Brood once or twice, uh, you are not going to be uh, long for this scenario. Finally, we saw Thalassophobia, which is uh, your basic uh, horror ping. 
Uh, it uh, is somewhat different than you know, cards we've seen in the past in that it affects all investigators. So that one's really dependent on uh, just how many copies are in the deck and how often you, uh, you get hit. It is uh, notable, though, that uh, if you are at a fully flooded location and you get hit with it, it's direct damage that cannot be prevented. So uh, perhaps bring some, uh, some healing along to, uh, to deal with that, to make sure that your sanity is topped up especially once you get into those that you move from the partially flooded locations into the fully flooded locations. So that uh, I am uh, looking forward to uh, this uh, Mythos pack. Uh, it will be interesting to see uh, Matt Newman's take on Iha and Fly. And uh, we will be wrapping up the campaign. Man, it uh, just seems like yesterday I was announcing the uh, Innsmouth Conspiracy Deluxe Expansion. Um, I expect that we will hear about the next uh, deluxe expansion probably next month in February, so uh, stay tuned for that. I will be uh, covering that once we have some news from, uh, from FFG. And uh, join me in part two, where I take a look at the player cards in Into the Maelstrom.